All right, welcome back guys to the last video. So in this video, we're going to continue our functions study guide. So the next part is we're going to prove that we can compare properties of functions. So we're proving that we are able to compare properties of a function. So at the movies, Jill and Carly each buy a box of gummy candy. Carly eats three gummies every 15 minutes during the movie. The number of gummies Jill has left based on the amount of time is shown in the graph below. So you're doing the exact same thing. You are comparing the functions, okay? So do we know what Carly's function is? We have to create the equation based off of what is going on. So let's, let's do that. So this is for Jill. So I'm gonna write Jill here just so we're not confused. This is Jill's graph. Carly, they each buy a box of gummies. So Carly eats three gummies every 15 minutes. So she has three gummies. So let me put our slope equals Y over X, okay? So our Y value for Carly, three gummies, See, number of gummies. She eats three gummies. And this is Carly. Carly eats three gummies. How many minutes? Every 15 minutes. So Carly's slope is three over 15, which can also look be one over five because you gotta divide, both, divide everything by three. So you would get one over five. So Carly is one over five. I'll put Carly's name here again, and we'll circle it so we can isolate that information. Jill, let's look. Well, I gotta find, okay, in 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 40 minutes, I don't have anything consistent yet, 50 minutes, 60 minutes. Okay, so that finally hit a point, and 90 minutes it hit a point. So we have 60 and 12. So Jill, is 12 over 60 her y value was 12 so she had 12 gummies in 60 minutes i can i can reduce this because both of them can be divided by 12. when i divide that by 12 12 divided by 12 is 1. 60 divided by 12 is 5. So they're eating it at the same rate. Okay? Let's look at this one. Oh, I didn't need to move it, did I? Did I just move it out of the frame? Okay, no worries. We're good, we're good, we're good. We're good, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. All right, over here, we have y equals 40x, 0.4x, 40x plus two, I'm assuming $2.50. So you start at $2.50, and then every mile, I assume, you have to pay 40 cents. Yep. So the total cost here, when before this person starts, they get in and it's $2.85. So if I were to try and, and create an equation for this one, I know that it's at $2.85 is where we start. That's our y-intercept. It starts there. I go from 0 to 5. So zero to five, that's five minutes, five minutes. Five. So the time is consistent. I go from $2.85 to $5.10. Well, what would that be? You would take $2. No, scratch that. I'm sorry. You would take $5.10 and subtract $2.85. So the rate of change from here to here is $2.25. I want to see what it is from here to here. So $7.35 minus $5.10 is going to give you $2.25 again. $9.60, it's 60, isn't it? $9.60 minus $7.35 is another $2.25. Now remember, what I've told you is we keep going 
until we get to the end of the chart, or I'm sorry, the end of the, um, the table, because you don't know if they're going to throw you a curveball at the very end and give you a number that is not going to equal the other numbers you've looked at. Because if that happens, then the table is not a function because there is no constant rate of change. For this one, it just so happens there is a constant rate of change. So we have $2.25. Okay, so it's asking you from New York or from San Francisco. So if I go five miles, this is $2.25 is the rate of change. And then this is five over here. Oops, sorry, I need to fix that. I have to get my white out. So then what you do is y equals uh, m <laughs> equals y over x. $2.25. And then five, so we'd have to do five, what's that, five minutes? Yep. 225 divided by five. Because this is plus five, plus five, plus five, and plus five. So for San Francisco, we're going to look at what the slope is. I'm going to say $2.25 cents divided by five. It's going to get me 45 cents. And New York, that slope is 40 cents. So which one is going to have the higher rate of change? San Francisco. That's how you would do that one. Okay, hopefully, hopefully I didn't confuse you. It seems like a lot, but I promise you it is not. It is not. You just have to remember which of the equations to use in order to find the slope, because that's all you're doing is trying to find the slope. So let's look at the ones underneath. Look at those two. Oh, it's one, two, one, two, three, four. It's four, six. So I can identify a function as a linear or nonlinear. If I look here, y equals 15x, y equals 15x is going to be a linear equation because it starts at zero zero why do, how do i know that because there is no that, well one of the reasons is because we do not have a y-intercept it starts at zero that means it passes the origin so it is a linear function what about here the issue with this is my x value is on the bottom. When your x value is the denominator, it cannot be linear. The reason it cannot be linear is because your x value cannot be the denominator. So x can't be denom, okay? It cannot be the denominator. What about here? Well, we talked about that on the other page. We have 15x squared. The difference is, yes, you can have x squared. You cannot have this coefficient in front of it. So this is nonlinear. Now, we're not talking about whether it's a function or not. We're talking about, is this going to be a straight line? It is not going to be a straight line. It can still be a function, but it is not a straight line because it has that exponent. Over here, this is okay. This is a linear. This is a linear line. It has a y-intercept. It has um, a slope. And the x is going to be our constant rate of change. I mean, I'm sorry. Our, <laughs> our, our constant rate of change is our slope. I apologize, guys. It's late and I'm tired. Um, but the x value can be next to the y, the the slope, just like how we would see y equals mx plus b. So yes, this is a linear function. Number 13, 
Does the table below represent a linear function? And it's going to ask you why or why not. If I look at this and I determine what the rate of change is, is there a rate of change here? From negative 2 to 0, I'm going up two spaces. From 0 to 2, I'm going up two spaces. And from 2 to 4, I'm going up two spaces. If I go from a decimal point up to 2, so if I said 2 and then you take away um, 2 tenths, you're going to end up with 1.8. If I go from 2 to 3 eighths, I'm going to still get up by 1.8, up by 1.8. So yes, this is a function. This is, I'm sorry, this is a linear um, equation because it has a constant rate of change. Does this one have a constant rate of change? Let's take a look. From four to four, we went down. I mean, so from four to zero, we went down four. Zero to negative four, we went down four. And negative four to negative 16, we actually went down 12. Here, it's still up by two, up by two, and up by two. The difference is there is no rate of change that is constant. So no, there isn't a constant rate of change. You always need to make sure you're determining what the constant rate of change is. Is there a constant rate of change? When you have a table, this is what you do. You determine from this value to this value, how far did I go on my number line? From here to here, how far did I go? And same thing with your y value. From here to here, how far did I go? And from here to here, how far did I go? That's how you would determine the rate of change. The last two are pretty simple and, and self-explanatory. If you're looking at the graph, does this look like a straight line? No. So this right here is automatically a no because it's not a straight line. That, that's just simple. That's just basic. This, yes, it's a straight line. It's a straight line. This one, no, it's not a straight line. That one, these are the easier ones because you could just look at it. Don't we all wish that all the answers could be that easy, right? So, as I said in the other videos, if you have questions, Please make sure you are asking them, you are reaching out to me, or you're using the videos on Khan Academy, or you're using other YouTube videos, or you're using my YouTube videos. All of these things are there to help you. Please use them, okay? If you do not get better than a 60%, you need to try it again, or I have to mark it as an incomplete. I want you to get a passing score. So keep working until you get a 60. You can also click the hit button. The hit button will continue to help you until you can arrive at the answer. Best of luck to you guys, and I will talk to you next week.